This week, the Enduro Cross season wraps up in California, but would a podium finish be enough for Cody Webb to get his first? Minios were in full swing over the weekend. We have some stories from the famed Winter Olympics in Gainesville, Florida. GNCC season in review, Team Hair Scrambles Championship of the World, the ATV version, and GNCC star Jordan Ashburn ventures to Japan for the JNCC, only on the Racer X Show. Hello and welcome to the Racer X Show presented by Chaparral Motorsports. I'm Greg, thanks for joining us here on our racing highlight and news show. Now this show, we're all over the place, like Ohio, Florida, even Japan. Plus a GNCC banquet happened with some special awards. Enough of this, let's get going. The Racer X Show with Greg White is being presented by Chaparral Motorsports. Visit Chaparral Motorsports online at chatmoto.com. And by Acherbys. Soul and passion. Last time on the Racer X Show, we had Enduro Cross Championship leader Cody Webb on, telling us about his run for the 2014 title. Now, a little over a week ago, when the main event for the final race of the season rolled into Ontario, California, he needed to finish 10th or better to dethrone five time champ Patty Blazusiak and take his first Geico AMA Enduro Cross Championship. Let's check out how the factory beta Steelwell Performance backed Webb finished up. When race action got going, Lucas Oil JCR Honda's Colton Haker took the $500 next entire hole shot award, but got sideways in the first woodpile section to allow factory Red Bull KTM's Blazusiak to take the lead. Webb made a few quick passes to end the first lap in third and seemed content to ride a consistent race. Blazusiak held a three to five second lead at the finish line for most of the 15 lap main event. Haker had a costly mistake on lap 13 that allowed Webb to pass for second but Webb quickly opened the door to stay clear of trouble. Then Haker got stuck in the rocks, which allowed Webb to take second for good. Haker had a few more mistakes, but held on comfortably to take the final podium spot. Blazusiak had a scare when he hit a down rider and crashed within sight of the finish line, but he managed to get it going just ahead of Webb, who celebrated taking his first title. Taylor Roberts, who jumped over the water hole all night long, worked his way to fourth. Red Bull's Jeff Aaron took fifth. Confirmation of that point spread, Cody Webb, your national champion on that factory beta Stillwell performance back machine. Congratulations to Cody and his entire team. So Endurocross ran from May 2nd to November 22nd. That's a long season. But in our Supercross segment, sponsored by Acherbys, we're highlighting the tight Supercross season schedule. So you can start your travel plans now. You've got a month until the first round which begins January 3rd in Angel Stadium in Anaheim, California. We stick around the West Coast, going to Phoenix, then back to Anaheim, up to Oakland, back down to SoCal, all back-to-back -back weeks. February begins in San Diego at Petco Park, then finally out of the West Coast and on to Texas, followed by back-to-back -back weekends at the Georgia Dome in Hotlanta. March kicks off Daytona, then some places that need some motorcycle racing that time of year. Indianapolis, Detroit, and St. Louis. When we head into April, it's back to Texas, to the new Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, California, all the way to MetLife Stadium just outside of New York City, and finally wrapping things up in Las Vegas on May 2nd. 17 races in 18 weeks. Now that is a schedule. Plan to go to a race or 10. Take a trip and have fun. That's our Supercross segment sponsored by a Cherby. Now to our motocross segment sponsored by a Cherby. During the Thanksgiving week, an outdoor motocross tradition 43 years in the running is the Thor Winter Olympics presented by Pro Circuit, or more commonly known as Mini O's. It combines Supercross and Motocross events for class and overall championships, and it takes place at the infamous Gatorback Cycle Park in Gainesville, Florida. It's the last chance for the top amateurs in the world to compete in 2014 as part of the American Motocross Majors events. And with around 2,300 entries, the cream surely rises to the top. The main focus at Minios are the battles in the 250A and Pro Sport and 450A and Pro Sport classes. 
we'll start off with some of the standouts from this year's event. The biggest has to be Darian Sinai. Coming off of a podium appearance at the Amateur All-Star Race at the Monster Energy Cup, Sinai, running the 457, won the 250 Pro Sport and 450 Pro Sport Supercross races, finishing second in 250A and fourth in 450A. In the motocross races, the Washington native would notch two second place finishes, a fourth and sixth. That was enough to earn him the coveted Dunlop Silver Tire Award the award given to the rider who accumulates the most points in pro and A classes in both Supercross and Motocross for the week. Another great performance on the weekend was from Alexander Fry. The Huntingtown, Maryland rider was battling Sinai for the Dunlop Award all weekend. The Orange Brigade racer started the week rough with a notable third in 250 Pro Sport Supercross, but it was the Motocross day that saw him shine. Fry on his KTMs won four of eight motos, sweeping 250 Pro Sport and 250A, winning the 450 Pro Sport, and a close second in 450A classes. He'll be racing for KTM in the 2015 Supercross season. And how about Jalik Swole? The 13-year-old from Florida won so much stuff that he took home both the Fox Bronze Boot Award for Best Overall Mini Cycle Rider and the Pro Circuit Platinum Pipe Award given to the rider who collects the best overall score of anyone in any set of classes, and he's 13. Those wins include Mini Senior Limited, Super Mini 1, and the Supercross, and the same classes in Motocross plus both 85cc classes he entered, with a second in Mini Senior. He was only off the podium once in the 13 races he entered. Crazy. Oh, and he has three more years he can race those classes. Oh boy. On the women's side of things, the land Florida's Hannah Hodges on the Suzuki dominated the girls 12 to 16 and won the women's 14 plus and gave the boys a run for their money by finishing third overall in the Super Mini 1 12 to 15 class. Go get them, Hannah. And finally to one fast 50 kid. Well, not anymore. If you know amateur racing, you know the name Ryder Francesco. He was winning 50cc races at Loretta Lynn's at the age of five years old. The Bakersfield, California rider on the 199 Cobra, well, he won three of the four 50cc classes he entered in both Supercross and Motocross. The nine-year-old announced his quote-unquote retirement from 50s as he has now aged out. He's on to 65s and we hear 85s are only a few weeks away. Rider switches from factory Cobra to Team Green moving forward. The WMX, or as some of you know it, the Women's Motocross Championship finale was held in conjunction with this year's Thor Winter Olympics. Now heading into the Gatorback Cycle Park, Kawasaki's Marissa Marklin was sitting two points behind defending champ Yamaha's Mackenzie Tricker and five points ahead of Suzuki's Kylie Fosnock. Let's see how it went. In Moto1, the top three in time practice, Tricker, Fosnock, and Marklin were all up front and in that order. First on Marklin's hit list, Fosnock, and inside line pass for second. Then she caught Tricker and made what she called, quote, the nicest pass I've ever made, unquote, for the lead. She'd never look back. In Moto2, Marklin ran in second behind Tricker, but Tricker would make a couple of mistakes, falling back to sixth, leaving Marklin in control. She led Fosnock to the line for her second win of the day and the 2014 AMA number one plate with a strong 1-1 performance at the eighth and final round of the series. Marklin blew a motor Friday and had to get a loaner from Kawasaki, rewarding the green machine by sweeping the day. In the final standings, Marklin 11 over Fosnock, 12 over Tricker, who missed two races during the season, one for travel problems, the other due to an elbow injury. We're really looking forward to the 2015 season. Now kicking off the 2015 calendar year of the American Motocross Majors is the Ricky Carmichael Daytona Amateur Supercross. It happens at Daytona International Speedway Sunday and Monday after the AMA Supercross March 8th and 9th. And registration is now open. So go to racedaytona.com to sign up. The Amsoil GNCC series presented by Maxxis wrapped up the last week of October and we put together a quick series recap of the motorcycles. So to refresh your memory on what a great season it was, here you go. The 2014 season landed at a new venue in Brunel, Florida and as chance would have it, it was called the Mudmucker GNCC named after the park actually. In the XC1 motorcycles, the preseason chit chat was about last season's rivals, FMF KTM duo of Caleb Russell and Charlie Mullins. However, a first turn crash would end up collecting both riders, giving the early lead to Paul Wibley. But by lap two, Mullins found the lead and the win 
As for Russell, mechanical issues kept him off the podium as Josh Strang took that spot. The general GNCC in Georgia saw one of the sloppiest events in recent memory. After dealing with mechanical issues in Florida, Caleb Russell came from fifth place on the first lap to take the win in the muddy Georgia clay with mud specialist Jordan Ashburn returning to the podium, Paul Wibley third. Round three and Steel Creek in Morganton, North Carolina, where the course was wet and rutted up, enough to make it a tough race. Well, maybe not for Caleb Russell, who was absolutely on rails and came away with a dominating win. Mullen second, edging out Strang for third. By round four at Big Buck, conditions were back to normal. And that was fine with Caleb Russell. He and Charlie Mullins were close, but it'd be Russell taking the win over Mullins, while Josh Strang proved to be Mr. Consistent and snagged another podium finish in third. Round five, the Dunlop Limestone 100, and drama for early race leader Caleb Russell. A hard crash, a mangled motorcycle, and Russell could not contend for the win. So Charlie Mullins picked up the pieces and the W. Russell almost on the podium, but had to settle for fourth. Next up, Loretta Lynn's Ranch in Tennessee. Round six, where a fierce three-hour battle was between Russell and Mullins, with Mullins coming out on top for the second time in a row. Strang again third. To round seven in Masontown, West Virginia. After back-to-back -back losses, Caleb Russell was on a mission with Mullins right behind him and Strang again on the podium. So at the halfway point, Mullins held the lead in the championship mainly because of Russell's problems in round one, but more ruckus was yet to come. When round eight was done and dusted, it was Caleb Russell taking the win by a dominating two minutes and 42 seconds over Josh Strang in second place. Jordan Ashburn with a great performance third. But what about Mullins? A practice crash the week before resulting in a badly broken wrist means he couldn't race. And his chances at the title, all but done. So that leads us to the big daddy, Snowshoe. Even without Mullins pushing, Caleb Russell pulled out a big win, but this time it was Jordan Ashburn taking second place, while Andrew DeLong finally landed the podium finish he's been trying to get all season. So that wrapped up June, and we wouldn't be back until September, 7th to be exact, where Caleb Russell picked up where he left off, leading each lap. In fact, at this point, with his four win streak going on, He's led every lap in each of those races, so 26 laps led in total. Duval was second with Ozzy Strang in third. At this point, Russell now has a 50-point lead. On to Mountain Ridge, where if standout star Caleb Russell won the race, he'd wrap up the championship early. Two races early, and that's exactly what he did. Even though the first lap was led by NFAB Ampro Yamaha's Jordan Ashburn, snapping Russell's lap-led streak, but in the end, it didn't matter because the win went to Russell. Ashburn second, Andrew DeLong third. To the penultimate round, Powerline Park in St. Clairsville, Ohio, where Russell showed up on a KTM 152 stroke, a motorcycle he'd auction off to raise money for injured racer and friend Rory Mead. And he only rode it like twice before setting off to the race. And when it all got sorted out, a tussle in the woods between Russell and Josh Strang took place with Strang coming out on top, Russell second. Which takes us to the final round 13, Amsoil Ironman. Russell, good to his word, rolled out the KTM 150 for the final time. Underpowered, most gave him no chance at winning, including Caleb himself. With FMF KTM's Charlie Mullins back in the mix, he'd duke it out with Rockstar Energy WMR KTM's Ryan Sipes for the first two laps. Until Russell took over and checked out. Leading the final four laps, Josh Strang took over the second spot. Ryan Sipes holds on to third. He likes Iron Man. The GNCC Motorcycle Banquet was held in Morgantown, West Virginia just before Thanksgiving with Rider of the Year honors going to who else? Caleb Russell. And my favorite award, the Badass Award. One rider nominated by fans and peers on anything that you think is badass about this person. And this year it went to Rory Mead who continues his battle with a spinal cord injury after a crash on the last lap of the Steel Creek round of the GNCC series on March 30th, 2014. The likable New Zealander was on hand to accept the award. Since you just heard all about the GNCC series, which of course is run in the US, we'll move on to the JNCC. That's the Japanese National Cross Country Series, where last month GNCC regular Jordan Ashburn traveled to Japan for the final round of the season. And when he arrived, Yamaha had 
a YZ250FX waiting for him, including a couple of Yamaha engineers who created the bike. The event was held at the Jigataki Ski Resort in Nagano that presented rough and rocky terrains similar to West Virginia's Amsoil Snowshoe GNCC, which Jordan finished runner-up, and the NFAB Ampro Yamaha rider used that mindset to his advantage as the Tennessee native put a substantial lead on his competition early on. After 11 laps and nearly three hours of racing, Ashburn finished over 14 minutes ahead of Japanese rider Manabu Watanabe, while multi-time JNCC champion Kenji Suzuki finished third overall. Congratulations to Jordan on the win. So last week we promised you more on the Team Hair Scrambles Championship of the World. This time we bring you video from the ATV side of things, where a GNCC ATV Pro and Pro-Am rider teamed up for the win but not without a fight and not without some drama. With a Le Mans style start kicking off racing, Marietta, Ohio's Braden Henthorne riding a Polaris Predator had the quickest legs, with Waterford, Ohio's Blake Tornis and Hubert, Ohio's Mark Notman third. At the end of lap two, Tornis would start the third lap and try to build a lead, while the teams behind, they'd all switch. Henthorne would switch out with Adam McGill riding a 400 Suzuki, and Notman would pass the torch to Walker Fowler, who was riding a Yamaha Banshee. On lap 10, disaster would strike for leaders Tornis and Cohen. While Cohen was enjoying a 35 second lead, his engine let go. If he gets back to the impound area, the second rider can go on his own machine. With the checkered flag in sight, Fowler closed on the rear wheels of McGill, but it wasn't enough. McGill took the win. Adam McGill finished off his season with a world championship thanks to the help of Henthorne. Cohen and Tornis did make that podium. Fun stuff. Okay, on to some quick road racing news in the US. We know that the new Superbike series is Moto America. When they announced the tentative 2015 schedule, there was no Daytona 200 listed, and some thought the famed Daytona 200 was dead. But yesterday, DIS announced that it's running the Daytona 200 with ASRA sanctioning on March 14th. Now the purse for the race, 175,000 bucks. That's a 66% increase over last year's 200 purse of 105,000. 2014, well, it was 20 grand to win, but in 15, I'm betting it's gonna be more than that. Now the question is, who's gonna show up to race? More on that in January. The Racer X Show with Greg White is being presented by Chaparral Motorsports. Visit Chaparral Motorsports online at chatmoto.com. And by Acherbys, soul and passion. We're wrapping things up on this one. That'll do it for us for 2014. We'll be back on January 6, 2015 with Supercross highlights and more. We hope you enjoyed it. We certainly did. Check us out on all of our social media links. On Twitter and Instagram, it's at RacerXShow. On the YouTube channel, it's The Racer X Show. Like us, follow us, do all that kind of stuff. We certainly appreciate it. And you can follow me personally on Twitter. It's at Greg White. Well, for the fine folks here at The Racer X Show, presented by Chaparral Motorsports, I'm Greg. Thanks for watching. Remember, we are all racing all the time. Happy holidays. See you later.